I'm Karim Fizazi, medical oncologist here at Institut Gustave Rossi in France. So PIS1 is a phase three trial, which is testing whether we should combine new treatments on top of standard of care for men with de novo metastatic prostate cancer. As probably you all know, we've changed completely the field in the last five years or so for this man with a demonstration that the stack cell, next generation hormonal agents, and also radiation therapy for men with oligometastic disease, all are associated with improved outcomes, including overall survival improvement in these men with M1 uh, prostate cancer. What we don't really know uh, until now is how best to combine these various new treatments on top of ADT, and this is exactly what PIS1 is aiming at. So basically, PIS1 is a two by two design phase three trial. So patients uh, with de novo metastatic prostate cancer are randomized between standard of care, and in the trial it was mostly androgen deprivation therapy plus dostaxel, or they are randomized to receive standard of care plus abiratron, or standard of care plus radiation therapy, or standard of care plus radiation, plus aberratron. So we can answer different uh, questions in the trial. So here at ASCO 2021, uh, we're showing the very first analysis, and that's the uh, co-primary endpoint of the graphic progression-free survival for the aberratron question. What we show is that adding aberratron on top of standard of care using ADT plus dostaxel tremendously improves radiographic progression for survival. Medians were two years in the control arm with ADT plus dostaxel and four years and a half with the addition of aberratron on top of ADT plus dostaxel. So two years and a half of additional time without progression or death that's of course very big and the difference is highly significant. This data was supported by a various analysis of PFS, counting symptoms or PSA, and all goes the same way, supporting, supporting clearly a much better outcomes with the addition of aberratron. Regarding safety, the, the news were good with a uh, same rate of neutropenial fe fever, for example, with the stack cell, 5% in both arms with or without aberratron. And actually some side effects related to the stack cell were seen with a lower incidence in the aberratron arm, such as fatigue or um, GI toxicity. The side effects of aberratron were as uh, expected. So increasing hypertension, hypokalemia and transaminase increase, but actually uh, quite a low increase. So we believe that this is probably a practice changing trial. In PS1, patients were stratified based on the extent of metastasis. And actually we couldn't find any difference regarding the efficacy of aberratron in patients with low burden disease and in versus those with high burden disease. Actually, the benefit was approximately 50% reduction in the risk of radiographic progression or death in both groups, which is excellent news for our patients. PIS1 only accrued patients with de novo metastatic prostate cancer. So we don't really know whether uh, its data also apply to men who have a relapse from local uh, disease to metastatic disease. But actually what we saw in other trials such as Titan, Enzamet, uh, and some others who actually have these uh, patients is that the efficacy of next generation hormonal therapy seems also to apply to these men with relapses, although the subgroups are, are rather limited.
Of course, we all like to see overall survival data. And uh, uh, for piece one, I think uh, the data are maturing. We should probably see them before the end of the year regarding the aberrant run cohesion. So we will know. But regardless what they are, having two years and a half of additional time without progression, whatever you, you measure this progression, for the graphic or PSA or symptoms, aberrant always wins. So just by itself, I think it justifies changing the, the standard of care for these men with de novo metastatic prostate cancer. And I think we should move to a triplet treatment for these men with ADT, dostaxel, and aberratron. 